all for love or the world well lost a tragedy by john dryden this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org dramatis personae mark antony read by thomas peter ventidius read by peter tucker dolabella read by phil Schempf. alexis read by daphne ma serapion read by alan mapstone myris read by chuck williamson gentleman one read by mike harris gentleman two read by todd cleopatra read by beth thomas octavia read by sonia shomia read by lian iris read by k hand agrippina read by zoe spilius antonia read by genevieve lenny and narrated by rob board prologue what flocks of critics hover here to-day as vultures wait on armies for their prey all gaping for the carcass of a play with croaking notes they bode some dire event and follow dying poets by the scent ours gives himself for gone you've watched your time he fights this day unarmed without his rhyme and brings a tale which often has been told as sad as dido's and almost as old his hero whom you wits his bully call baits of his mettle and scarce rants at all he's somewhat lewd but a well-meaning mind weeps much fights little but is wondrous kind in short a pattern and companion fit for all the keeping tonies of the pit i could name more a wife and mistress too both to be plain too good for most of you the wife well-natured and the mistress true now poets if your fame has been his care allow him all the candour you can spare a brave man scorns to quarrel once a day like hector's inn at every petty fray let those find fault whose wits so very small they've need to show that they can think at all errors like straws upon the surface flow he who would search for pearls must dive below fops may have leave to level all they can as pygmies would be glad to lop a man half wits of fleas so little and so light we scarce could know they live but that they bite but as the rich when tired with daily feasts for change become their next poor tenants guests drink hearty draughts of ale from plain brown bowls and snatch the homely rasher from the coals so you retiring from much better cheer for once may venture to do penance here and since that plenteous autumn now is past whose grapes and peaches have indulged your taste take in good part from our poor poet's board such rivalled fruits as winter can afford scene alexandria act one the temple of isis enter serapion miris priests of isis portents and prodigies have grown so frequent that they have lost their name our fruitful nile flowed ere the wonted season with a torrent so unexpected and so wondrous fierce that the wild deluge o'ertook the haste even of the hinds that watched it men and beasts were borne above the tops of trees that grew on the utmost margin of the water-mark then with so swift an ebb the flood drove backward it slipped from underneath the scaly herd here monstrous foci panted on the shore forsaken dolphin there with their broad tails lay lashing the departing waves hard by them sea-horses floundering in the slimy mud tossed up their heads 
and dashed the ooze about them. Enter Alexis behind them. Avert these omens, heaven. Last night, between the hours of twelve and one, in a lone aisle of the temple while I walked, a whirlwind rose that with a violent blast shook all the dome. The doors around me clapped. The iron wicket that defends the vault where the long race of Ptolemies is laid burst open and disclosed the mighty dead. From out each monument in order placed an armed ghost starts up. The boy king last reared his inglorious head. A peal of groans then followed, and a lamentable voice cried, Egypt is no more. My blood ran back, my shaking knees against each other not. On the cold pavement down I fell entranced, and so unfinished left the horrid scene. Alexis showing himself. And uh, dreamed you this, or did invent the story, to frighten our Egyptian boys withal, and train them up betimes in fear of priesthood? My lord, I saw you not, nor meant my words should reach your ears. But what I uttered was most true. A foolish dream, bred from the fumes of indigested feasts and holy luxury. I know my duty. This goes no further. Tis not fit it should, nor would the times now bear it were it true. All southern from yon hills the Roman camp hung o'er us black and threatening like a storm just breaking on our heads. Our faint Egyptians pray for Antony, but in their servile hearts they own Octavius. Why then does Antony dream out his hours, and tempts not fortune for a noble day, which might redeem what Actium lost? He thinks tis past recovery. Yet the foe seems not to press the siege. Oh, there's the wonder. My Kinus and Agrippa, who can most with Caesar, are his foes. His wife Octavia, driven from his house, solicits her revenge and Dolabella, who was once his friend, upon some private grads, now seeks his ruin. Yet still war seems on either side to sleep. Tis strange that Antony, for some days past, has not beheld the face of Cleopatra. But here in Isis' temple lives retired, and makes his heart a prey to black despair. Tis true and we must fear he hopes by absence to cure his mind of love. If he be vanquished, or make his peace, Egypt is doomed to be a Roman province, and our plenteous harvests must then redeem the scarceness of their soil. While Antony stood firm, our Alexandria rivalled proud Rome, Dominion's other seat, and fortune striding like a vast colossus could fix an equal foot of empire here. Had I my wish, these tyrants of all nature, who lord it o'er mankind, would perish, perish, each by the other's sword. But since our will is lamely followed by our power, we must depend on one, with him to rise or fall. How stands the queen affected? Oh, sit dote, sit dote, Serapion, on this vanquished man, and wins herself about his mighty ruins, whom would she yet forsake, yet yield him up, this hunted prey to his pursuer's hands, she might preserve us all, but tis in vain. This changes my designs, this blasts my counsels, and makes me use all means to keep him here, whom I could wish divided from her arms, far as the earth deep centre. Well, you know the state of things. No more of your ill omens and black prognostics. Labour to confirm the people's hearts. Enter Ventidius, talking aside with a gentleman of Antony's. These Romans will all hear us. But who's that stranger? By his warlike port, his fierce demeanour and erected look, He's of no vulgar note. 
Otis Vendatius, our emperor's great lieutenant in the east, who first so drummed that Parthia would be conquered. When Antony returned from Syria last, he left this man to guard the Roman frontiers. You seem to know him well. Too well. I saw him at Sicilia first, when Cleopatra there met Antony. A mortal foe was to us and Egypt, but let me witness to the worth I hate. A braver Roman never drew a sword. Firm to his prince, but as a friend, not slave, he ne'er was of his pleasures, but presides o'er all his cooler hours and morning counsels. In short, the plainness, fierceness, ragged virtue of an old true stamp Robin lives in him. His coming bodes I know not what of ill to our affairs. Withdraw to mark him better, and I'll acquaint you why I sought you here, and what's our present work. They withdraw to a corner of the stage, and Ventidius, with the other, comes forward to the front. Not see him, say you? I say I must, and will. He is commanded, on pain of death, none should approach his presence. I bring him news that will raise his drooping spirits, give him new life. He sees not Cleopatra. Would he had never seen her. He eats not, drinks not, sleeps not, has no use of anything but thought. Or if he talks, tis to himself, and then tis perfect raving. Then he defies the world and bids it pass. Sometimes he gnaws his lips and curses loud the boy Octavius. Then he draws his mouth into a scornful smile and cries, Take all, the world's not worth my care. Just, just his nature, virtue's his path. But sometimes tis too narrow for his vast soul, and then he starts out wide and bounds into a vice that bears him far from his first course and plunges him in ills. But when his danger makes him find his faults, quick to observe and full of sharp remorse, he censures eagerly his own misdeeds, judging himself with malice to himself, and not forgiving what as man he did because his other parts are more than man. He must not thus be lost. Alexis and the priests come forward. You have your full instructions. Now advance, proclaim your orders loudly. Romans, Egyptians, hear the Queen's command. Thus Cleopatra bids. Let labour cease. To pomp and triumphs give this happy day that gave the world a lord. Tis Antony's. Live, Antony, and Cleopatra live. Be this the general voice sent up to heaven, and every public place repeat this echo. Ventidius aside. Fine pageantry. Set out before your doors the images of all your sleeping fathers, with laurels crowned. With laurels wreathe your posts, and strew with flowers the pavement. Let the priests do present sacrifice. Pour out the wine, and call the gods to join with you in gladness. Curse on the tongue that bids this general joy! Can they be friends of Antony, who revel when Antony's in danger? Hide for shame, you Romans, your great-grandsire's images, for fear their souls should animate their marbles, to blush at their degenerate progeny. A love which knows no bounds to Antony would mark the day with honours, when all heaven laboured for him, when its propitious star stood wakeful in his orb towards that hour and said his better influence her own birthday our queen neglected like a vulgar fate that passed obscurely by would it had slept divided far from his till some remote and future age had called it out to ruin some other prince not him your emperor though grown unkind would be more gentle than to abrade my queen for loving him too well 
does the mute sacrifice upbraid the priest he knows him not his executioner oh she has decked his ruin with her love led him in golden bands to gaudy slaughter and made perdition pleasing she has left him the blank of what he was i tell thee eunuch she has quite unmanned him can any roman see and know him now thus altered from the lord of half mankind unbent unsinewed made a woman's toy shrunk from the vast extent of all his honours and cramped within a corner of the world oh antony thou bravest soldier and thou best of friends bounteous as nature next to nature's god couldst thou but make new worlds so wouldst thou give them as bounty were thy being rough in battle as the first romans when they went to war yet after victory more pitiful than all their praying virgins left at home would you could add to those more signing virtues his truth to her who loves him would i could not but wherefore waste i precious hours with thee thou art her darling mischief her chief engine antony's other fate go tell thy queen ventidius is arrived to end her charms let your egyptian timbrels play alone nor mix effeminate sounds with roman trumpets you dare not fight for antony go pray and keep your coward's holiday in temples exalt alexis serapion re-enter the gentleman of mark antony the emperor approaches and commands on pain of death that none presume to stay i dare not disobey him going out with the other well i dare but i'll observe him first unseen and find which way his humour drives the rest i'll venture withdraws enter antony walking with a disturbed motion before he speaks they tell me tis my birthday and i'll keep it with double pomp of sadness tis what the day deserves which gave me breath why was i raised the meteor of the world hung in the skies and blazing as i travelled till all my fires were spent and then cast downward to be trod out by caesar ventidius aside on my soul tis mournful wondrous mournful count thy gains now antony wouldst thou be born for this glutton of fortune thy devouring youth has starved thy wanting age ventidius aside how sorrow shakes him so now the tempest tears him up by the roots and on the ground extends the noble ruin antony having thrown himself down lie there thou shadow of an emperor the place thou pressest on thy mother earth is all thy empire now now it contains thee some few days hence and then twill be too large when thou art contracted in thy narrow urn shrunk to a few ashes then octavia for cleopatra will not live to see it octavia then will have thee all her own and bear thee in her widowed hand to caesar caesar will weep the crocodile will weep to see his rival of the universe lie still and peaceful there oh, think no more on't give me some music look that it be sad i'll soothe my melancholy till i swell and burst myself with sighing soft music tis somewhat to my humour stay i fancy i'm now turned wild a common of nature of all forsaken and forsaking all live in a shady forest sylvan scene stretched at my length beneath some blasted oak i lean my head upon the mossy bark and look just of a piece as i grew from it my uncombed locks matted like mistletoe hang o'er my hoary face a murmuring brook runs at my foot methinks i fancy myself there too the herd come jumping by me and fearless quench their thirst while i look on and take me for their fellow citizen more of this image more it lulls my thoughts soft music again 
i must disturb him i can hold no longer stands before him antony starting up art thou ventidius are you antony i'm liker what i was than you to him i left you last i'm angry so am i i will be private leave me sir i love you and therefore will not leave you will not leave me where have you learnt that answer who am i my emperor the man i love next heaven if i said more i think twas scare a sin you're all that's good and godlike oh that's wretched you will not leave me then twas too presuming to say i would not but i dare not leave you and it is unkind in you to chide me hence so soon when i so far have come to see you now thou hast seen me art thou satisfied for if a friend thou hast beheld enough and of a foe too much look emperor this is no common dew ventidius weeping i have not wept this forty years but now my mother comes afresh into my eyes i cannot help her softness by heavens he weeps poor good old man he weeps the big round drops course one another down the furrows of his cheeks stop them ventidius or i shall blush to death they set my shame that calls them fall before me i'll do my best sure there's contagion in the tears of friends see i have caught it too believe me tis not for my own griefs but thine nay father emperor emperor why that's the style of victory the conquering soldier red with unfelt wounds salutes his general so but never more shall that sound reach my ears i warrant you actium actium oh it sits too near you here here it lies a lump of lead by day and in my short distracted nightly slumbers the hag that rides my dreams out with it give it vent urge not my shame i lost a battle so has julius done thou favourest me and speaks not half thou thinkst for julius fought it out and lost it fairly but antony nay stop not antony well thou wilt have it like a coward fled fled while his soldiers fought fled first ventidius thou longst to curse me and i give thee leave i know thou camp'st prepared to rail i did i'll help thee i have been a man ventidius yes and a brave one but i know thy meaning but i have lost my reason have disgraced the name of soldier with inglorious ease in the full vintage of my flowing honours sat still and sought pressed by other hands fortune came smiling to my youth and wooed it and purple greatness met my ripened years when first i came to empire i was born on tides of people crowding to my triumphs the wish of nations and the willing world received me as its pledge of future peace i was so great so happy so beloved fate could not ruin me till i took pains and worked against my fortune child her from me and returned her loose yet still she came again my careless days and my luxurious nights at length have wearied her and now she's gone 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 divorced for ever help me soldier to curse this madman this industrious fool who laboured to be wretched prithee curse me no why you are too sensible already of what you've done too conscious of your failings and like a scorpion whipped by others first to fury sting yourself in mad revenge i would bring balm and pour it in your wounds cure your distempered mind and heal your fortunes i know thou wouldst i will 
<laughs> you laugh? I do, to see officious love give cordials to the dead. You would be lost, then? I am. I say you are not. Try your fortune. I have, to the utmost. Dost thou think me desperate without just cause? No. When I found all lost beyond repair, I hid me from the world, and learned to scorn it here. But now I do so, heartily, I think it is not worth the cost of keeping. Caesar thinks not so. He'll thank you for the gift he could not take. You would be killed like Tully, would you? Do hold out your throat to Caesar and die tamely. No, I can kill myself and so resolve. I can die with you too when time shall serve. But fortune calls upon us now to live, to fight, to conquer. Sure thou dreamst, Ventilius. No, tis you dream. You sleep away your hours in desperate sloth, miscalled philosophy. Up, up, for honour's sake! Twelve legions wait you, and long to call you chief. By painful journeys I led them, patient both of heat and hunger, down from the Parthian marches to the Nile. Twill do you good to see their sunburnt faces, their scarred cheeks and chopped hands. There's virtue in them. They'll sell those mangled limbs at dearer rates than yon trim bands can buy. Where left you, then? I said in Lower Syria. Bring them hither. There may be life in these. They will not come. Why didst thou mock my hopes with promised aids to double my despair? They are mutinous. Most firm and loyal. Yet they will not march to succour me. O oh, trifler! They petition you would make haste to head them. I am besieged. There's but one way shut up. How came I hither? I will not stir. They would perhaps desire a better reason. I have never used my soldiers to demand a reason of my actions. Why did they refuse to march? They said they would not fight for Cleopatra. What was they said? They said they would not fight for Cleopatra. Why should they fight indeed to make her conquer and make you more a slave, to gain you kingdoms which for a kiss at your next midnight feast you'll sell to her? Then she new names her jewels and calls this diamond such or such a tax. Each pendant in her ear shall be a province. Ventidius, I allow your tongue free license on all my other faults, but on your life, no word of Cleopatra. She deserves more worlds than I can lose. Behold, you powers! To whom you have entrusted humankind. See Europe, Africa, Asia put in balance, and all weighed down by one light, worthless woman. I think the gods are Antony's, and give, like prodigals, this nether world away to none but wasteful hands. You grow presumptuous. I take the privilege of plain love to speak. Plain love? Plain arrogance, plain insolence. Thy men are cowards, thou an envious traitor, who, under seeming honesty, hast vented the burden of thy rank, overflowing gall. Oh, that thou wert my equal, great in arms as the first Caesar was, that I might kill thee without a stain to honour. You may kill me. You have done more already. Called me traitor. Art thou not one? For showing you yourself, which none else durst have done. But had I been that name which I disdain to speak again, I needed not have sought your abject fortunes, come to partake your fate, to die with you. What hindered me to have led my conquering eagles to fill Octavius's bands? I could have been a traitor then. A glorious, happy traitor, and not have been so called. Forgive me, Sosha. I have been too passionate. You thought me false. Thought my old age betrayed you. Kill me, sir. Pray, kill me. Yet you need not. Your unkindness has left your sword no work. I did not think so. 
I said it in my rage. Prithee, forgive me. Why didst thou tempt my anger by discovery of what I would not hear? No prince but you could merit that sincerity I used, nor durst another man have ventured it. But you, ere love misled your wandering eyes, were sure the chief and best of human race, framed in the very pride and boast of nature, so perfect that the gods who formed you wondered at their own skill and cried, A lucky hit has mended our design. Their envy hindered, else you had been immortal, and a pattern when heaven would work for ostentation's sake to copy out again. But Cleopatra, go on, for I can bear it now. No more. Thou darest not trust my passion, but thou mayst. Thou only lovest the rest have flattered me. Heaven's blessing on your heart for that kind word. May I believe you love me. Speak again. Indeed I do. Speak this, and this, and this. Hugging him. Thy praises were unjust, but I'll deserve them, and yet mend all. Do with me what thou wilt. Lead me to victory. Thou knowst the way. And will you leave this? Prithee, do not curse her and I will leave her, though heaven knows I love beyond life, conquest, empire, all but honour. But I will leave her. That's my royal master. And shall we fight? I warrant thee, old soldier, thou shalt behold me once again in iron, and at the head of our old troops that beat the Parthians cry aloud. Come, follow me. Oh, now I hear my emperor. In that word Octavius fell. Gods, let me see that day, and if I have ten years behind, take all. I'll thank you for the exchange. O oh, Cleopatra. Again? I've done. In that last sigh she went. Caesar shall know what is to force the lover from all he holds most dear. Methinks you breathe another soul. Your looks are more divine. You speak a hero, and you move a god. Oh, thou hast fired me. My soul's up in arms, and man's each part about me. Once again that noble eagerness of fight has seized me, that eagerness with which I darted upward to Cassius's camp. In vain the steepy hill opposed my way. In vain a war of spears sung round my head and planted on my shield. I won the trenches while my foremost men lagged on the plain below. Ye gods, ye gods, for such another honour! Come on, my soldier. Our hearts and arms are still the same. I long once more to meet our foes, that thou and I, like time and death, marching before our troops, may taste fate to them, mow them out a passage, and, entering where the former squadrons yield, begin the noble harvest of the field. End of Act One Act Two of All for Love or The World Well Lost. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. All for Love or The World Well Lost by John Dryden. Act Two. Enter Cleopatra, Iris, and Alexis. What shall I do, or whither shall I turn? Ventidius has all come and he will go he goes to fight for you then he would see me ere he went to fight flatter me not once he goes he's lost and all my hopes destroyed does this weak passion become a mighty queen i am no queen is this to be a queen to be besieged by yon insulting roman and to wait each hour the victor's chain these ills are small for Antony is lost, and I can mourn for nothing else but him. Now, come, Octavius, I have no more to lose. Prepare thy bands, I am fit to be a captive. Antony has taught my mind the fortune of a slave. Call reason to assist you. I have none, and none would have. My love's a noble madness, which shows the cause deserved it. Moderate sorrow fits vulgar love, and for a vulgar man. But I have loved with such transcendent passion, I soared at first, quite out of reason's view, and now am lost above it. 
no i am proud tis thus would antony could see me now think you he would not sigh though he must leave me sure he would sigh for he is noble-natured and bears a tender heart i know him well ah no i know him not i knew him once but now tis past let it be past with you forget him madam never never iris he once was mine and once though now tis gone leaves a faint image of possession still think him inconstant cruel and ungrateful i cannot if i could those thoughts were vain faithless ungrateful cruel though he be i still must love him enter carmion now what news my carmion will he be kind and will he not forsake me am i to live or die nay do i live or am i dead for when he gave his answer fate took the word and then i lived or died i found him madam a long speech preparing if thou bringst comfort haste and give it to me for never was more need i know he loves you had he been kind her eyes had told me so before her tongue could speak it now she studies to soften what he said but give me death just as he sent it carmion undisguised and in the words he spoke i found him then encompassed round i think with iron statues so mute so motionless his soldier stood while awfully he cast his eyes about and every leader's hopes or fears surveyed methought he looked resolved and yet not pleased when he beheld me struggling in the crowd he blushed and bade make way there's comfort yet ventidius fixed his eyes upon my passage severely as he meant to frown me back and sullenly gave place i told my message just as you gave it broken and disordered i numbered in it all your sighs and tears and while i moved your pitiful request that you but only begged a last farewell he fetched an inward groan and every time i named you sighed as if his heart were breaking but shunned my eyes and guiltily looked down he seems not now that awful antony who shook an armed assembly with his nod but making show as he would rub his eyes disguised and blotted out a falling tear did he then weep and was i worth a tear if what thou hast to say be not as pleasing tell me no more but let me die contented he bid me say he knew himself so well he could deny you nothing if he saw you and therefore thou wouldst say he would not see me and therefore begged you not to use a power which he could ill resist yet he should ever respect you as he ought is that a word for antony to use to cleopatra oh that faint word respect how i disdain it disdain myself for loving after it he should have kept that word for cold octavia respect is for a wife am i that thing that dull insipid lump without desires and without power to give them you misjudge you see through love and that deludes your sight as what is straight seems crooked through the water but i who bear my reason undisturbed can see this antony this dreaded man a fearful slave who fain would run away and suns his master's eyes if you pursue him my life on it he still drags a chain along that needs must clock his flight could i believe thee by every circumstance i know he loves true his heart pressed by interest and by honour yet he but doubts and parleys and casts out many a long look for shacker he sends word he fears to see my face and would you more he sows his weakness who declines the combat and you must urge your fortune could he speak more plainly to my ears the message sounds come to my rescue cleopatra come come free me from ventitus from my tyrant see me and give me a pretence to leave him i hear his trumpets this way he must pass please you retire awhile i'll work him first then he may bend more easy 
you shall rule me but all i fear in vain exit with carmion and iris i fear so too though i concealed my thoughts to make her bold but is our utmost means and fate befriended it withdraws enter lictors with facies one bearing the eagle then enter antony with ventidius followed by other commanders octavius is the minion of blind chance but holds from virtue nothing has he courage but just enough to season him from coward oh, tis the coldest youth upon a charge the most deliberate fighter if he ventures as in illyria once they say he did to storm a town tis when he cannot choose when all the world have fixed their eyes upon him and then he lives on that for seven years after but at a close revenge he never fails i heard you challenged him i did ventidius what thinkst thou was his answer twas so tame he said he had more ways than one to die i had not poor he has more ways than one but he would choose them all before that one he first would choose an ague or a fever no it must be an ague not a fever he has not warmth enough to die by that or old age and a bed ay there's his choice he would live like a lamp to the last wink and crawl the utmost verge of life oh hercules why should a man like this who dares not trust his fate for one great action be all the care of heaven why should he lord it o'er fourscore thousand men of whom each one is braver than himself you conquered for him philippi knows it there you shared with him that empire which your sword made all your own fool that i was upon my eagle's wings i bore this wren till i was tired with soaring and now he mounts above me good heavens is this is this the man who braves me who bids my age make way drives me before him to the world's ridge and sweeps me off like rubbish sir so we lose time the troops are mounted all then give the word to march i long to leave this prison of a town to join thy legions and in open field once more to show my face lead my deliverer enter alexis great emperor in mighty arms reowned above mankind but in soft pity to the oppressed a god this message sends the mournful cleopatra to her departing lord smooth sycophant a thousand wishes and ten thousand prayers millions of blessings wait you to the wars millions of sighs and tears he sent you too and would have sent as many dear embraces to your arms as many parting kisses to your lips but those he fears have wearied you already ventidius aside false crocodile and yet she begs not now you would not leave her that were a wish too mighty for her hopes too presuming for her low fortune and your ebb in love that were a wish for her more prosperous days her blooming beauty and your growing kindness antony aside well i must man it out what would the queen first to these noble warriors who attend your daring courage in the chase of fame too daring and too dangerous for her quiet she humbly recommends all she holds dear all her own cares and fears the care of you yes witness actium let him speak ventidius you when this matchless valour bears him forward with ardour too heroic on his foes fall down as she would do before his feet lie in his way and stop the paths of death tell him this god is not invulnerable that absent cleopatra bleeds in him and that you may remember her petition she begs you wear these trifles as a pawn which at your wished return she will redeem gives jewels to the commanders with all the wealth of egypt this to the great venditus she presents whom she can never count her enemy because he loves her lord tell her i'll not aunt. i'm not ashamed of honest poverty not all the diamonds of the east can bribe ventidius from his faith i hope to see these and the rest of all her sparkling store where they shall more deservingly be placed 
and who must wear them then the wronged octavia you might have spared that word and he that bribe but have i no remembrance yes a dear one your slave the queen my mistress then your mistress your mistress would she says have sent her soul but that you had long since she humbly begs this ruby bracelet set with bleeding hearts the emblems of her own may bind your arm presenting a bracelet now my best lord in honour's name i ask you for manhood's sake and for your own dear safety touch not these poisoned gifts infected by the sender touch them not myriads of bluest plagues lie underneath them and more than aconite has dipped the silk nay now you grow too cynical ventidius a lady's favours may be worn with honour what to refuse a bracelet on oh, my soul when i lie pensive in my tent alone twill pass the wakeful hours of winter nights to tell these pretty beads upon my arm to count for every one a soft embrace a melting kiss at such and such a time and now and then the fury of a love when and what harm's in this known known my lord but what's to her that's now dispassed for ever antony going to tie it <laughs> we soldiers are so awkward help me tie it in faith my lord we courtiers too are awkward in these affairs so are all men indeed even i who am i not one but shall i speak yes freely then my lord fair hands alone are fit to tie it see who send it can hell death this eunuch panda ruins you you will not see her alexis whispers an attendant who goes out but to take my leave then i have washed an ethiop you're undone you're in the toils you're taken you're destroyed her eyes do caesar's work you fear too soon i'm constant to myself i know my strength and yet she shall not think me barbarous neither born in the depths of Africa. i am a roman bred in the rules of soft humanity a guest and kindly used should bid farewell you do not know how weak you are to her how much an infant you are not proof against a smile or glance a sigh will quite disarm you see she comes now you shall find your error gods i thank you i form the danger greater than it was and now tis near tis lessened mark the end yet enter cleopatra carmion and iris well madam we are met is this a meeting then we must part we must who says we must our own hard fates we make those fates ourselves yes we have made them we have loved each other into our mutual ruin the gods have seen my joys with envious eyes i have no friends in heaven and all the world as twere the business of mankind to part us is armed against my love even you yourself join with the rest you you are armed against me i will be justified in all i do to late posterity and therefore hear me if i mix a lie with any truth reproach me freely with it else favour me with silence you command me and i am dumb i like this well he shows authority that i derive my ruin from you alone oh heavens i ruin you you promised me your silence and you break it ere i have scarce begun well i obey you when i beheld you first it was in egypt ere caesar saw your eyes you gave me love and were too young to know it that i settled your father in his throne was for your sake i left the acknowledgment for time to ripen caesar stepped in and with a greedy hand plucked the green fruit ere the first blush of red yet cleaving to the bough he was my lord and was beside too great for me to rival but i deserved you first though he enjoyed you when after i beheld you in cilicia an enemy to rome i pardoned you 
I cleared myself. Again you break your promise. I loved you still, and took your weak excuses, took you into my bosom, stained by Caesar, and not half mine. I went to Egypt with you, and hid me from the business of the world, shut out inquiring nations from my sight, to give whole years to you. Ventidius aside. Yes, to your shame be it spoken. How I loved. Witness, ye days and nights, and all ye hours, that danced away with down upon your feet, as all your business were to count my passion. One day passed by, and nothing saw but love. Another came, and still twas only love. The sons were wearied out with looking on, and I untied with loving. I saw you every day, and all the day, and every day was still but as the first. So eager was I still to see you more. Tis all too true. Fulvia, my wife, grew jealous, as she indeed had reason, raised a war in Italy to call me back. But yet you went not. While within your arms I lay, the world fell mouldering from my hands each hour and left me scarce a grasp. I thank your love for it. Well pushed. That last was home. Yet. May I speak? If I have urged a falsehood, yes, else not. Your silence says I have not. Fulvia died, pardon your gods, with my unkindness, died. To set the world at peace I took Octavia, this Caesar's sister, in her pride of youth, and flower of beauty, did I wed that lady, whom blushing I must praise, because I left her. You called, my love obeyed the fatal summons. This raised the Roman arms. The cause was yours. I would have fought by land where I was stronger. You hindered it. Yet when I fought at sea, forsook me fighting, and, O oh, stain to honour, O oh, lasting shame, I knew not that I fled, but fled to follow you. What haste she made to hoist her purple sails, and to appear magnificent in flight, drew half our strength away. All this you caused and would you multiply more ruins on me this honest man my best my only friend has gathered up the shipwreck of my fortunes twelve legions i have left my last recruits and you have watched the news and bring your eyes to seize them too if you have aught to answer now speak you have free leave alexis aside she stands confounded despair is in her eyes now lay a sigh in the way to stop his passage prepare a tear and bid it for his legions tis like they shall be sold how shall i plead my cause when you my judge have already condemned me shall i bring the love you bore me for my advocate that now is turned against me that destroys me for love once past is at the best forgotten but oftener sours to hate twill please my lord to ruin me and therefore i'll be guilty but could i once have thought it would have pleased you that you would pry with narrow searching eyes into my faults severe to my destruction and watching all advantages with care that serve to make me wretched speak my lord for i end here though i deserved this usage was it like you to give it oh you wrong me to think i sought this parting or desired to accuse you more than what will clear myself and justify this breach thus low i thank you and since my innocence will not offend i shall not blush to own it after this i think she'll blush at nothing you seem grieved and therein you are kind that caesar first enjoyed my love though you deserved it better i grieve for that my lord much more than you for had i first been yours it would have saved my second choice i never had been his and ne'er had been but yours but caesar first you say possessed my love not so my lord he first possessed my person you my love caesar loved me but i loved antony if i endured him after twas because i judged it due to the first name of men and half constrained i gave as to a tyrant what he would take by force 
oh siren siren yet grant that all the love she boasts were true has she not ruined you i still urge that the fatal consequence the consequence indeed for i dare challenge him my greatest foe to say it was designed tis true i loved you and kept you far from an uneasy wife such fulvia was yes but he'll say you left octavia for me and can you blame me to receive that love which quitted such desert for worthless me how often have i wished some other caesar great as the first and as the second young would court my love to be refused for you words words but actium sir remember actium even there i dare his malice true i counselled to fight at sea but i betrayed you not i fled but not to the enemy twas fear would i had been a man not to have feared for none would then have envied me your friendship who envy me your love we are both unhappy if nothing else yet our ill fortune parts us speak would you have me perish by my stay if as a friend you ask my judgment go if as a lover stay if you must perish tis a hard word but stay see now the effects of her so boasted love she strives to drag you down to ruin with her but could she scape without you oh how soon would she let go her hold and haste to shore and never look behind then judge my love by this giving antony a writing could i have borne a life or death a happiness or woe from yours divided this had given me means by hercules the writing of octavius i know it well tis that prescribing hand young as it was that led the way to mine and left me but the second place in murder see see ventidius here he offers egypt and joins all syria to it as a present so in requital she forsake my fortunes and join her arms with his and yet you leave me you leave me antony and yet i love you indeed i do i have refused a kingdom that is a trifle for i could part with life with anything but only you oh let me but die with you is that a hard request next living with you tis all that heaven can give alexis aside he melts we conquer no you shall go your interest calls you hence yes your dear interest pulls too strong for these weak arms to hold you here takes his hand go leave me soldier for you're no more a lover leave me dying push me all pale and panting from your bosom and when your march begins let one run after breathless almost for joy and cry she's dead the soldiers shout you then perhaps may sigh and muster all your roman gravity ventidius chides and straight your brow clears up as i had never been comes it is too much too much for man to bear what is it for me then a weak forsaken woman and a lover here let me breathe my last envy me not this minute in your arms i'll die apace as fast as e'er i can and end your trouble die rather let me perish loosen nature leap from its hinges sink the props of heaven and fall the skies to crush the netherworld my eyes my soul my all embraces her and what's this toy in balance with your fortune honour fame what is ventidius it outweighs them all why we have more than conquered caesar now my queen's not only innocent but loves me this this is she who drags me down to ruin but could she scape without me with what haste would she let slip her hold and make to shore and never look behind down on thy knees blasphemer as thou art and ask forgiveness of wronged innocence i'll rather die than take it will you go go whither go from all that's excellent 
faith honour virtue all good things forbid that i should go from her who sets my love above the price of kingdoms give ye gods give to your boy your caesar this rattle of a globe to play with all this gugar world and put him cheaply off i'll not be pleased with less than cleopatra she's wholly yours my heart's so full of joy that i shall do some wild extravagance of love in public and the foolish world which knows not tenderness will think me mad o oh, women 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 all the gods have not such power of doing good to man as you of doing harm exit our men are armed unbar the gate that looks to caesar's camp I would revenge the treachery he meant me, and long security makes conquest easy. I am eager to return before I go, for all the pleasures I have known beat thick on my remembrance. How I long for night, that both the sweets of mutual love may try, and triumph once o'er Caesar ere we die. End of Act Two Act Three of All for Love or the World Well Lost. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. All for Love or the World Well Lost by John Dryden. Act Three. At one door enter Cleopatra, Carmion, Iris, and Alexis, a train of Egyptians. At the other, Antony and Romans. The entrance on both sides is prepared by music, the trumpets first sounding on Antony's part, then answered by timbrels, etc., on Cleopatra's. Carmion and Iris hold a laurel wreath betwixt them, a dance of Egyptians. After the ceremony, Cleopatra crowns Antony. I thought how those white arms would fold me in and strain me close and melt me into love so pleased with that sweet image i sprung forwards and added all my strength to every blow come to me come my soldier to my arms you've been away too long from my embraces but when i have you fast and all my own with broken murmurs and with amorous sighs i'll say you were unkind and punish you and mark you red with many an eager kiss my brighter venus oh my greater mars thou joinest us well my love suppose me come from the phlegrian plains where gasping giants lay cleft by my sword and mountain tops paired off each other blow to bury those i slew receive me goddess let caesar spread his subtle nets like vulcan in thy embraces i would be beheld by heaven and earth at once and make their envy what they meant their sport let those who took us blush i would love on with awful state regardless of their frowns as their superior gods there's no satiety of love in thee enjoyed thou still art new perpetual spring is in thy arms the ripened fruit but falls and blossoms rise to fill its empty place and i grow rich by giving Enter Ventidius and stands apart. Oh, now the danger's past, your general comes. He joins not in your joys, nor minds your triumphs, but with contracted brows looks frowning on, as envying your success. Now on my soul he loves me, truly loves me. He never flattered me in any vice, but awes me with his virtue. Even this minute, methinks, he has a right of chiding me lead to the temple i'll avoid his presence it checks too strong upon me exaunt the rest as antony is going ventidius pulls him by the robe emperor antony looking back tis the old argument i pray thee spare me but this one hearing emperor let go my robe or by my father hercules by hercules father that's yet greater i bring you somewhat you would wish to know thou seest we are observed attend me here and i return exit i am waning in his favour yet i love him i love this man who runs to meet his ruin 
and sure the gods like me are fond of him his virtues lie so mingled with his crimes as would confound their choice to punish one and not reward the other re-enter antony we can conquer you see without your aid we have dislodged their troops they look on us at distance and like curves escaped from the lion's paws they bay far off and lick their wounds and faintly threaten war five thousand romans with their faces upward lie breathless on the plain tis well and he who lost them could have spared ten thousand more yet if by this advantage you could gain an easier peace while caesar doubts the chance of arms oh think not on ventidius the boy pursues my ruin he'll know peace his malice is considerable in advantage oh he's the coolest murderer so staunch he kills and keeps his temper have you no friend in all his army who has power to move him Mecanus or agrippa might do much they're both too deep in caesar's interests we'll work it out by dint of sword or perish fain i would find some other thank thy love some four or five such victories as this will save thy further pains expect no more caesar is on his guard i know sir you have conquered against odds but still you draw supplies from one poor town and of egyptians he has all the world and at his beck nations come pouring in to fill the gaps you make pray think again why dost thou drive me from myself to search for foreign aids to hunt my memory and range all over a waste and barren place to find a friend the wretched have no friends yet i had one the bravest youth of rome whom caesar loves beyond the love of women he could resolve his mind as fire as wax from that hard rugged image melt him down and mould him in what softer form he pleased him would i see that man of all the world just such a one we want he loved me too i was his soul he lived not but in me we were so closed within each other's breasts the rivets were not found that joined us first that does not reach us yet we were so mixed as meeting streams both to ourselves were lost we were one mass we could not give or take but from the same for he was i i he ventidius aside he moves as i would wish him after this i need not tell his name twas dolabella he's now in caesar's camp <laughs> no matter where since he's no longer mine he took unkindly that i forbade him cleopatra's sight because i feared he loved her he confessed he had a warmth which for my sake he stifled for it were impossible that two so one should not have loved the same when he departed he took no leave and that confirmed my thoughts it argues that he loved you more than her else he had stayed but he perceived you jealous and would not grieve his friend i know he loves you i should have seen him then ere now perhaps he has thus long been labouring for your peace would he were here would you believe he loved you i read your answer in your eyes you would not to conceal it longer he has sent a messenger from caesar's camp with letters let him appear i'll bring him instantly exit ventidius and re-enters immediately with dolabella antony runs to embrace him tis himself himself my holy friendship art thou returned at last my better half come give me all myself let me not live if the young bridegroom longing for his knight was ever half so fond i must be silent for my soul is busy about a nobler work she's new come home like a long absent man and wanders o'er each room a stranger to her own to look if all be safe thou hast what's left of me for i am now so sunk from what i was thou finds me at my lowest water-mark the rivers that ran in and raised my fortunes are all dried up or take another course what i have left is from my native spring i have still a heart that swells in scorn of fate and lifts me to my banks still you are the lord of all the world to me why then i yet am so for thou art all if i had any joy when thou wert absent i grudged to myself 
methought I robbed thee of thy part. But, O oh, my Dolabella, thou hast beheld me other than I am. Hast thou not seen my morning chambers filled with sceptred slaves who waited to salute me, with eastern monarchs who forgot the sun to worship my uprising? Menial kings ran coursing up and down my palace yard, stood silent in my presence, watched my eyes, and, at my least command, all started out like races to the goal. Slaves to your fortune. Fortune is Caesar's now, and what am I? What you have made yourself. I will not flatter. Is this friendly done? Yes, when his end is so, I must join with him. Indeed I must, and yet you must not chide. Why am I else your friend? Take heed, young man, how thou upbraidst my love. The queen has eyes, and thou too hast a soul. Canst thou remember, when, swelled with hatred, thou beheldst her first as accessory to thy brother's death? Spare my remembrance. Twas a guilty day, and still the blush hangs here. To clear herself, to sending him no aid, she came from Egypt. A galley down the silver Sidness rode, the tackling silk, the streamers waved with gold, the gentle winds were lodged in purple sails, her nymphs, like nereids, round her couch were placed, where she, another seaborne Venus, lay. No more. I would not hear it. Oh, you must. She lay, and lent her cheek upon her hand, and cast a look so languishingly sweet, as if secure of all beholders hearts neglecting she could take them boys like cupids stood fanning with their painted wings the winds that played about her face but if she smiled a darting glory seemed to blaze abroad that men's desiring eyes were never wearied but hung upon the object to soft flutes the silver oars kept time and while they played the hearing gave new pleasure to the sight and both the thought "'Twas heaven, or somewhat more, for she so charmed all hearts, "'that gazing crowds stood panting on the shore, "'and wanted breath to give their welcome voice. "'Then, Dolabella, where was then thy soul? "'Was not thy fury quite disarmed with wonder? "'Didst thou not shrink behind me from those eyes and whisper in my ear? "'Oh, tell her not that I accused her with my brother's death, and should my weakness be a plea for yours mine was an age when love might be excused when kindly warmth and when my springing youth made it a debt to nature yours speak boldly yours he would say in your declining age when no more heat was left but what you forced when all the sap was needful for the trunk when it went down then you constrained the course and robbed from nature to supply desire in you i would not use so harsh a word tis but plain dotage ha twas urged to home but yet the lost was private that i made twas but myself i lost i lost no legions i had no world to lose no people's love this from a friend yes antony a true one a friend so tender that each word i speak stabs my own heart before it reach your ear oh judge me not less kind because i chide to caesar i excuse you o oh, ye gods have i then lived to be excused to caesar as to your equal well he's but my equal while i wear this he never shall be more i bring conditions from him are they noble Methinks thou shouldst not bring them else, yet he is full of deep dissembling, knows no honour divided from his interest. Fate mistook him, for nature meant him for a usurer. He's fit indeed to buy, not conquer kingdoms. Then granting this, what power was theirs, who wrought so hard a temper to honourable terms? I was my Dolabella, or some god. Nor I, nor yet Messinus, nor Agrippa, they were your enemies and i a friend too weak alone yet twas a roman's deed twas like a roman done show me that man who has preserved my life my love my honour let me but see his face that task is mine and heaven thou knowst how pleasing 
Exit Ventidius. You'll remember to whom you stand obliged. When I forget it, be thou unkind, and that's my greatest curse. My queen shall thank him too. I fear she will not. But she shall do it. The queen, my Dolabella, hast thou not still some grudgings of thy fever? I would not see her lost. When I forsake her, leave me my better stars, for she has truth beyond her beauty. Caesar tempted her at no less price than kingdoms to betray me. But she resisted all. And yet thou chidest me for loving her too well. Could I do so? Yes, there's my reason. Re-enter Ventidius with Octavia, leading Antony's two little daughters. Antony, starting back, Where? Octavia there? What, is she poison to you? A disease? Look on her, view her well, and those she brings. Are they all strangers to your eyes? Has nature no secret call, no whisper there, yours? For shame, my lord, if not for love, receive them with kinder eyes. If you confess a man, meet them, embrace them, bid them welcome to you. Your arms should open, even without your knowledge, to clasp them in. Your feet should turn to wings to bear you to them, and your eyes dart out, and aim a kiss ere you could reach the lips. I stood amazed to think how they came hither. I sent for them. I brought them in unknown to Cleopatra's guards. Yet are you cold? Thus long I have attended for my welcome, which, as a stranger, sure I might expect. Who am I? Caesar's sister. That's unkind. Had I been nothing more than Caesar's sister, no, I had still remained in Caesar's camp. But your Octavia, your much-injured wife, though banished from your bed, driven from your house, in spite of Caesar's sister, still is yours. Tis true, I have a heart disdains your coldness, and prompts me not to seek what you should offer. But a wife's virtue still surmounts that pride. I come to claim you as my own, to show my duty first, to ask, nay beg, your kindness. Your hand, my lord, tis mine, and I will have it. Taking his hand. Do, take it. Thou deserv'st it. On my soul, and so she does. She's neither too submissive, nor yet too haughty, but so just a mean shows, as it ought, a wife and Roman too. I fear, Octavia, you have begged my life. Begged it, my lord? Yes, begged it, my ambassadress. Poorly and basely begged it of your brother. Poorly and basely I could never beg, nor could my brother grant. Shall I, who to my kneeling slave could say, Rise up and be a king, shall I fall down and cry? Forgive me, Caesar. Shall I set a man, my equal, in the place of Jove, as he could give me being? No, that word forgive would choke me up and die upon my tongue. You shall not need it. I will not need it. Come, you've all betrayed me. My friend, too, to receive some vile conditions. My wife has bought me with her prayers and tears, and now I must become her branded slave. In every peevish mood she will upbraid the life she gave. If I but look awry, she cries, I'll tell my brother. My hard fortune subjects me still to your unkind mistakes. But the conditions I have brought are such you need not blush to take. I love your honour because tis mine. It never shall be said Octavia's husband was her brother's slave. Sir, you are free, free even from her you loathe. For though my brother bargains for your love, makes me the price and cement of your peace, I have a soul like yours. I cannot take your love as arms, nor beg what I deserve. I'll tell my brother we are reconciled. He shall draw back his troops, and you shall march to rule the east. I may be dropped at Athens, no matter where. I never will complain, but only keep the barren name of wife and rid you of the trouble. Was ever such a strife of sullen honour? Both scorn to be obliged. 
oh she has touched him in the tenderest part see how he reddens with despite and shame to be outdone in generosity see how he winks how he dries up a tear that fain would fall octavia i have heard you and must praise the greatness of your soul but cannot yield to what you have proposed for i can ne'er be conquered but by love and you do all for duty you would free me and would be dropped at athens was not so it was my lord then i must be obliged to one who loves me not who to herself may call me thankless and ungrateful man i'll not endure it no ventidius aside i am glad it pinches there would you triumph over poor octavia's virtue that pride was all i had to bear me up that you might think you owed me for your life and owed it to my duty not my love i have been injured and my haughty soul could brook but ill the man who slights my bed therefore you love me not therefore my lord i should not love you therefore you would leave me and therefore i should leave you if i could her soul's too great after such injuries to say she loves and yet she lets you see it her modesty and silence plead her cause oh Dolabella, which way shall i turn i find a secret yielding in my soul but cleopatra who would die with me must she be left pity pleads for octavia but does it not plead more for cleopatra justice and pity both plead for octavia for cleopatra neither one would be ruined with you but she first had ruined you the other you have ruined and yet she would preserve you in everything their merits are unequal oh my distracted soul sweet heaven compose it come come my lord if i can pardon you methinks you should accept it look on these are they not yours or stand they thus neglected as they are mine go to him children go kneel to him take him by the hand speak to him for you may speak and he may own you too without a blush and so he cannot all his children go i say and pull him to me and pull him to yourselves from that bad woman you agrippina hang upon his arms and you antonia clasp about his waist if he will shake you off if he will dash you against the pavement you must bear it children for you are mine and i was born to suffer here the children go to him etc was ever sight so moving emperor friend husband father i am vanquished take me octavia take me children share me all embracing them i have been a thriftless debtor to your loves and run up much in riot from your stock but all shall be amended o oh, blessed hour o oh, happy change my joy stops at my tongue but it is found two channels here for one and bubbles out above antony to octavia this is thy triumph lead me where thou wilt even to thy brother's camp all there are yours enter alexis hastily the queen my mistress sir and yours tis past octavia you shall stay this night to-morrow caesar and we are one exit leading octavia dolabella and the children follow there's news for you run my officious eunuch be sure to be the first haste forward haste my dear eunuch haste exit this downright fighting fool this thick-skulled hero this blunt unthinking instrument of death with plain dull virtue has outgone my wit pleasure forsook my earliest infancy the luxury of others robbed my cradle and ravished thence the promise of a man 
cast out from nature, disinherited, of what her meanest children claim by kind. Yet greatness kept me from contempt. That's gone. Had Cleopatra followed my advice, then he had been betrayed, who now forsakes. She dies for love, but she has no need joys. Gods, is this just that I, who know no joys, must die because she loves? Enter Cleopatra, Carmion, Iris, and Train. Oh, madam, I have seen what blasts my eyes. Octavia's here. Peace with that raven's note. I know it too and now am in the pangs of death. You are no more a queen. Egypt is lost. What tellest thou me of Egypt? My life, my soul is lost. Octavia has him. O oh, fatal name to Cleopatra's love. My kisses, my embraces now are hers, while I... But thou hast seen my rival. Speak. Does she deserve this blessing? Is she fair, bright as a goddess? and is all perfection confined to her it is poor i was made of that coarse matter which when she was finished the gods threw by for rubbish she's indeed a very miracle death to my hopes a miracle alexis bowing a miracle i mean of goodness for in beauty madam you make all wonder cease I was too rash. Take this in part of recompense, but oh! Giving a ring. I fear thou flatterest me. She comes! She's here! Fly, madam! Caesar's sister. Were she the sister of the thunderer Jove, and bore her brother's lightning in her eyes, thus would I face my rival. Meets Octavia with Ventidius. Octavia bears up to her. Their trains come up on either side. I need not ask if you are Cleopatra. Your haughty carriage shows I am a queen. Nor need I ask you who you are. A Roman, a name that makes and can unmake a queen. Your lord, the man who serves me, is a Roman. He was a Roman till he lost that name to be a slave in Egypt. But I come to free him thence. Peace, peace, my lover's Juno. When he grew weary of that household clog, he chose my easier bonds. I wonder not your bonds are easy. You have long been practised in that lascivious art. He is not the first for whom you spread your snares. Let Caesar witness. I loved not Caesar. Twas but gratitude I paid his love. The worst your malice can is but to say the greatest of mankind has been my slave. The next, but far above him in my esteem, is he whom law calls yours, but whom his love made mine. Octavia, coming up close to her. I would view nearer that face which has so long usurped my right, to find the inevitable charms that catch mankind so sure, that ruined my dear lord. Oh, you do well to search, for had you known but half these charms, you had not lost his heart. Far be their knowledge from a Roman lady, far from a modest wife. Shame of our sex! Dost thou not blush to own those black endearments that make sin pleasing? You may blush who want them. If bounteous nature, if indulgent heaven have given me charms to please the bravest man, should I not thank them? should i be ashamed and not proud i am that he has loved me and when i love not him heaven change this face for one like that thou lovest him not so well i love him better and deserve him more you do not cannot you have been his ruin who made him cheap at rome but cleopatra who made him scorned abroad but cleopatra at Actium, who betrayed him? Cleopatra. Who made his children orphans, and poor me a wretched widow? Only Cleopatra. Yet she who loves him best is Cleopatra. 
if you have suffered i have suffered more you bear the specious title of a wife to gild your cause and draw the pitying world to favour it the world condemns poor me for i have lost my honour lost my fame and stained the glory of my royal house and all to bear the branded name of mistress there wants but life and that too i would lose for him i love be it so then take thy wish exit with her train and tis my wish now he is lost for whom alone i lived my sight grows dim and every object dances and swims before me in the maze of death my spirits while they were opposed kept up they could not sink beneath a rival's scorn but now she's gone they faint mine have had leisure to recollect their strength and furnish counsel to ruin her who else must ruin you vain promiser lead me my carmian nay your hand too iris my grief has weight enough to sink you both conduct me to some solitary chamber and draw the curtains round then leave me to myself to take alone my fill of grief there i till death will his unkindness weep as harmless infants moan themselves asleep end of act three